to Hindi with consultant Department of Anesthesiology and Operative Care at Ganga Medical Center and Hospital Coimbatore. He has more than 101 papers and in indexed peer-reviewed national and international journals. He's the contributing author to Pocket Book on Regional Anesthesia Techniques. He also has contribution to Barrage Clinical Anesthesia and he, uh, his YouTube channel is very famous for uh, regional anesthesia education and it is free. Over to Dr. Duhin. He will be speaking on lumbar cleft. Thank you so much, madam, for your kind introduction. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thanks to uh, Jayasri Shud, madam, Deep Sir, and Kani, madam, and team APSA for giving me this wonderful opportunity to present here. So today I am going to discuss about the lumbar plexus block. Before I begin, let me declare the sources of photographs are appropriately cited in my presentation. The illustrations and videos are mostly my drawing and recording and the patient or volunteer consent was obtained. So whenever we speak about the lumbar plexus block, few words comes in our mind like it is an advanced level block. It is associated with uh, many complications. So all these things comes in our mind. It doesn't matter whether you are doing a PNS guided or ultrasound guided or a dual guidance lumbar plexus block. For the next 30 to 40 minutes, I will try to explain some core concept in my presentation, which will let you understand the intricacies of this block, which probably will make a better block performer and of course to score in your final exam. All three terminologies are same now. So lumbar plexus, posterior lumbar plexus and swast compartment block all are same. If you look at the formation or origin of the lumbar plexus, so it is formed by the ventral primary rami of L1 to L3 and major part of the L4 and also a contribution from the T12. I hope it has already been discussed in the last class. The important point here is the lower abdominal nerve that is the iliohypogastric and the ilioinguinal nerve. These are getting blocked in 70% cases when you perform a lumbar plexus block. In latest cadaveric study published in 2016, what you can see here, the femoral nerve and the obturator nerve only have the fixed origin, that is from L2, L3 and L4. Whereas the other four components of the lumbar plexus origin varies. It might get tweaked from the T12, L1, L2 or L3. So this we should remember while we are selecting a block for a particular surgery. The lumbar plexus after formation, it travels, it lies within the swast compartment, the anterior fleshy two third and the thin posterior one third. After coming out from the intervertebral foramen, as you can see here, it enters into the lumbar paravertebral space. And then instead of going into the swast compartment, it takes a steep caudal course and uh, travel caudally as you can see here from each intervertebral foramen it is coming out and going caudally coming out and going caudally so at a particular level suppose here you will see the element of the lumbar plexus of the lumbar nerve root of the above after full formation it takes the shape of a triangle where the narrower part is the uppermost and the base area that's why we targeted this area, this L3, L4 and L5 transverse process area for our block. And the after, after origin, the branches also distributed in a fan-shaped manner where the LFCN lies in the extreme lateral and obturator nerve extreme medial and femoral genitive femoral are in between. So if you, if you take a transverse section at the level of L4, L5 or just below the transverse process, what we can see here is the articular process, the intervertebral foramina and the fourth lumbar root is coming out. But at the same level, if you look at the swast compartment, the lumbar plexus element composed of the L3 nerve root. This is one important point. Second one is to see the vascularity of this area. I have not drawn the vasculature inside the swast major muscle. The lot of arteries and the ascending lumbar veins are here at this wedge-shaped lumbar paravertebral space. So we should always keep our needle away from this lumbar paravertebral space to avoid the vascular injury as well as the intravascular injections. 
this is an interesting anatomical study where they found that obturator nerve lies in a separate muscular component in more than 50% of the cases. Obturator nerve may not get blocked in lumbar plexus. And second point is we don't accept the obturator nerve stimulation that is the adductor response as our uh, evoked motor response. Whenever you are selecting lumbar plexus block for any particular surgery, you need to consider dermatome, myotome and osteome. So if you look at the dermatome, myotome and the osteotomal distribution, the upper part of the lower limb that is and the lower abdominal area, this area is supplied by the subcostal nerve, iliohypogastric, ilioinguinal and posteriorly the superior clunial nerve. The upper part of the incision comes under that area which may not get blocked with the lumbar plexus. So if you have done a wonderful lumbar plexus block, drug spread was adequate but the moment surgeon make the incision patient may complain of pain because of this reason so what we have to do just ask your surgeon to give local infiltration or you can do a separate t12 paravertebral block or anterior or lateral uh, ql block or transversalis fascia plane block or ultrasound guided superior clunial nerve block are helpful to block the dermatomal area, the incisional part. So lumbar plexus block is mainly indicated for the anesthesia of hip surgeries and the lower limb surgeries. Usually we combine it with the sacral plexus or the sciatic nerve block. So few things you have to keep in mind when you are choosing lumbar plexus over spinal or epidural for anesthesia. Number one is the other limb is not anesthetized. So you need to give sedation or you need to keep the limb in supine position not in the lithotomy position if possible. You can discuss with the surgeon if they can modify their procedure so that patient can keep the limb in the supine position which will be comfortable. The contraindication includes uh, absolute one, patient refusal, local anesthetic allergy, all these you have already read multiple times, so it's just similar to the other regional anesthesia procedure.